What's up guys, my name is Dan and in my hands right now I have literally the most sought after tent in the world. This tent was invented by a guy named Dan Durston and it is literally impossible to purchase right now. I got this tent on Facebook Marketplace. It was on for maybe an hour, messaged the guy and instantly gave him what he was asking for so that I could get this tent in my hands. So this was purchased by me, but I've got lots of questions about this tent. I'm sure you have lots of questions about this tent. So I figured the best way to get answers about this tent is to go directly to the source. And I'm gonna be asking Dan Durston some of the questions about this tent why it is what it is, why he decided to make it, and even some questions that he may not really wanna answer. Oh, but one more thing. I know you want this tent, so I was able to secure a second tent that we will be giving away to one of you at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around to the end to find out how you can win this tent. Durston, what's up, buddy? Hey, Dan, what's up? How are you? Good, just living the dream. Perfect. <laughs> okay, Dan, so I need to ask you a couple questions. I appreciate you being here. Um, I've been seeing this tent on Reddit posts. I've been seeing like actual Facebooks, like groups dedicated to your tent. I feel like Every time I turn around, you're at the top of the list of best backpacking tents out there. It's like literally the most sought after tent in the world. How did you do that? Especially since I heard you're the only <clears throat> person working at Durston Gear. <laughs> Can you tell us how yeah. that happened? I, I didn't mean to do it. I, I never set out to start a business or anything. I'm just, I think kind of partly why it's been so cool and popular is it's just this grassroots thing. I was just, I was hiking the PCT, geeking out on tents, hiking some trails here in Canada. Finally had this idea for how I could make my perfect tent. And I was just gonna sew one up for me. It wasn't like I had any commercial ambitions. But there was a company out of the States at the time that wanted to uh, do new products. And they were, I was talking to them and they were like, hey, if you have any ideas, just like from here, let us know. And I was like, oh, this tent would be pretty cool. And anyways, they kind of helped me get it to market, and then they kind of pieced out, long story. But basically, like, I ended up, they kind of kick-started the whole thing, and it came back to me, and now I'm running the show from my spare bedroom. It's just like, <laughs> me chilling in the house. You, you sound exactly uh, like me. I may or may not be working out of a spare bedroom in my house as well, so. Yeah. So we have, obviously we have, like, professional factories that actually make the tents, but, like, everything else, like, design... All that stuff's me, just figuring it out, uh, testing. But you... Answering emails. Are, okay, did you just uh, sort of quit a day job, though? Yeah, like, I, I had a day job that I quit last week. So, like, everyone <laughs> thinks we're, like... I mean, we're popular, but everyone thinks we're, like, you know, huge company. It's, it's basically me, a bit of help from some friends and family. Okay. Like, I I was yeah, had a day job till okay. last week. All right, so I want to ask you more questions now about the tent. Okay, so I kind of want to know um, why this tent is never available. Like, why, 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 why do people on Reddit and all these other places say that it's so difficult to get? And when, it, when can people finally get this tent? Yeah, it's been a battle for sure. Uh, half of it's just like the pains of small business. But, like, a big part of it is... I mean, a one-person show should be able to produce thousands of tents out of their house, right? It should be no big deal. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like, we were kind of doing all right at the beginning, and then two things happened at the same time. It, like, the tent blew up, so there, now there's ten times as many people that want one. And COVID happened where all the factories are like, well, it's two years if you order more tents. So we're blowing up, and the factories are, you know, they can't make us more tents. They're serving their bigger customers. And for this tent in particular, it's Dyneema. They weren't even taking new customers like for most of COVID. So everyone's like, oh, why can't you just like get Dyneema like everyone else? It's like, well, they've been customers for a decade. So trying to show up as a new guy and all this during COVID is, is hard. But we're finally there. Like we have a ton of production happening now. Regular tents are in stock. 
today. Wow, and okay. We're going to have a ton of these in February. February. Okay, so February 2023 is yeah. when you're going to open the doors, and then do you expect them to sell out like day one, and then are you going to be locked for another six months again, or do you think you're going to have enough stock to make people not talk about this anymore? Yeah, like people get frustrated, and I get it. Like people get frustrated when we open a sale and it's sold out quick, and I don't want that frustration for people either. So we've actually opened orders now for February, so people can like you have to, you have to order sooner, but people can secure one ahead of time, and then it's not going to sell out in Feb. Okay. So it, it probably will sell out at some point, but okay, there's not going to be that panic because it's open now. Okay. Do you ever find yourself in this tent? So this is the. Two, do you make a one person of this too, or just? working on it okay so okay so you got a one oh this is a two do you ever find yourself because it's a big footprint was that part of the thought process um because i think it's a what it's 100 by 90 right this one's 100 by 80 well okay sorry 100 by 80 do you find yourself um like where i'm at in the midwest there's a lot of trees a lot of uh forest that kind of thing and sometimes it's difficult to find a big open spot for a tent like this was mm -hmm. was that into consideration when you were building this tent but that, that had to have been a big problem right because you got to make people happy for the interior of the tent, but also the out exterior of the tent's got to be, you know, it's going to have to be bigger, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a trade off. Everybody wants everybody wants a tent that's big on the inside and small on the outside. Right, <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. But um, what we've done, we got some feedback on the original Exmit too that people were finding it sometimes a bit big. So this is almost ten inches narrower. It's 100 by 80 instead of 100 by 90. Okay. Than the original too, so we have got it a bit smaller. And then the other thing you can do is you can collapse the vestibules. You can basically unstake the corners if you put out the peak guidelines. Oh, really? There's a bit of a process. You actually have to add some extra stakes on the end too. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I I have it staked here with a you know I I put six stakes in just because I wanted you to be impressed with my pitch. Are you impressed? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Is this probably the best pitch of a tent that you've ever seen of yours? It's definitely the best one today. <laughs> so you're saying the owner of the company pitches the tent better than I do? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> it looks good. All right. Okay, cool. So I just wanted to make sure I had it looking nice and that it was – so then when I open up the doors, it's just easier for me to do it while I'm holding the phone. But I've heard that this tent is super storm-worthy based on the fact that it tent angles appropriately. Is that right? And then also snow would slide off pretty easily. Was that – part of the design as well yeah yeah like with any tent the, the angles matter but they're a trade-off because like flat like low angles are good for wind but they're not as good for snow and vice versa so most tents what you'll see is they've got a flat roof that catches snow and then they've got kind of flatter sides that catch wind whereas here on the x -Men, almost every slope is actually about the same angle they're all about 55 degrees 55 degrees wow that. okay uh, it's about that optimal balance between wind and snow. If it was like, if it was one way, it would hold snow, and if it was the other way, it would catch wind. Okay, okay. And then uh, our, you got guy out. Well, this no, this is not a guy out point, right? That's for the yeah. That one, there, you can put a line on there. Okay, this is the guy. This is where you the mag. So you got magnets in here. So that's so, so, okay. Thank you for doing that, by the way, because I hate those stupid tabs on other tents. Those are those drive me nuts. The magnets are nice. Mm -hmm. I like the magnets. Um, and then, um, now I don't know if I set this up correctly cause I didn't like <laughs> go on to like figure out how to do it, but I don't have pole tips up on this, right? Is that, it's not supposed to be pole, right. pole tips are down. Yeah. Okay. Is that because it's Dyneema? It's kind of because it's a single wall and the, it creates a natural pocket for your pole handle when the wall connects to the peak. Okay. Whereas in the double wall regular tents, there's not that natural pocket. So you'd have to build something that would be extra and heavier. Oh. I use the grommets for those. Okay. So on the original X-Mid, this is a completely separate piece of material. Like it's one that you, for the first time, I, you know, I, I attached it myself and I just sort of left it. I felt it was just easier to do that. And that's how I packed mm -hmm. it up. But this one's like actually attached to the Dyneema. Uh, what was the thought process behind that? Yeah, because this is our super light version. We're just like, we're hunting for grams. And when you sew it right in on the sidewalls, then you can have a partial inner. So there's not actually mesh overhead. And that saves, saves weight. Just it's a hybrid design. So it's not as modular. And it doesn't um, have all the same pros and cons. But it, it ultimately is quite a bit lighter. So it's... Okay, so the idea behind that was essentially to save weight. So 
that turned this into a single wall tent rather than a double wall tent, but that was a sacrifice you made, which I don't think it's a big deal at all. <laughs> I, I actually kind of, I don't mind a single wall tent. It doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, you just, you just don't touch the sides. That's what you do. You just don't touch the sides. Yeah. And you can wipe them down easier. And wipe them down, right? Yeah, exactly. So, okay. So let's talk about uh, the interior of the tent. So the tent zipper opens with, wow, actually one hand. That was pretty nice. Uh, and the tent door does not fall to the ground. That's kind of nice. Um, so it's the shape of the inside of the tent is sort of cockeyed. That's obviously by design, I hope. It wasn't like you just bumped your computer mouse and then accidentally printed off the wrong design, am I right? Yeah, so, it's, on a, it's on a diagonal and it's a parallelogram shape, so it's a pretty unique shape on the floor. Yeah, and that was so that you could utilize as much interior space as possible based on the exterior of the tent where the poles are, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, it fully utilizes the space inside the rectangle and really makes it all possible inside a rectangle. Like, so you actually have the floor and vestibules and everything in a simpler rectangle instead of going with some hexagon or something. Okay, why have I heard that people think that you have to sleep, like if you've got two people in the tent, right? You've got maybe one here and one here. Why have I heard that you have to sleep one person with their head here and the other person with their head here in order to fit with like the right headroom? So essentially, you're sleeping where you have to smell the other person's feet. Did you do that on purpose or is that true? Tell, help me understand that. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's we really don't recommend people so, oh wait, you don't recommend people do that? No, I mean, I get what Is that a rumor? Say. Why is why is that a rumor? Okay, go ahead, sorry. Yes, so we, with the, with the whole x men geometry, you end up with a ridge line that's on a diagonal, which gives you a little more headroom on one end than the other. So, basically, basically one side gets a bit of extra headroom. In the camera there on the right side, it's a little steeper, you get extra headroom. And so if you flip the other person the other way, then you both get that extra headroom. But the thing is, the headroom on the other side is still like super normal. It's quite a spacious tent, and compared to the like the main competing tents, even on the like the lower side, there's still just as much headroom as there is on like both sides of those tents. Okay. So it's kind of like one person gets extra, and you could both get extra if you flip, but there's really no need. I sort of feel like, because I've laid in it on both sides, because I was kind of wondering why what people were saying. And I sort of felt like on the side where people say that there isn't as much headroom, that mm -hmm. that was almost like a normal tent. Like it, any other tent, I felt like I had that much headroom. And then I come over here and just because this wall is a little more vertical, I felt like I was like gifted headroom. So I don't, I didn't, yeah. I guess I didn't notice it. Plus I sort of feel like that since this one's angled this way, this person could just sort of, if they're tall enough, slide down a few inches. <laughs> That's what you should do. Like, the floor is super long. It's about six, eight inches longer than kind of some comparable tents. So you can actually just slide down and leave that, like, as extra room for gear at your head. It's just, like, okay. any, any spot. Okay. Okay. I have another question for you because this tent, like, when you look at it from this angle, the poles are just not in... <laughs> they're not normal. Like, what you yeah. normally see, you see them, like, down the middle, like, A-frames or... You know, just they, they look, something just looks off when you're looking at the tent, but I, obviously that's by design. So my big question for you is, is because the angles are pitched like this, how does this ridge line actually affect then headroom on the inside of the tent? Because I would think that maybe people sitting in certain areas may not have as much headroom. I don't know, how does that, how does that work? Yeah, so what it does is it, it does two things. It gives you more headroom in total, but it changes where it is. When you put the ridge line on a diagonal, it becomes longer. So there's essentially a longer span across the tent that's going to be high. Instead of just like right across the middle, it's running down diagonally across the floor of the tent. So it's there's more headroom in this tent than comparable tents. It's like a lot of our testers say like, wow, this is like 20 or 30 percent bigger than okay. like the, the main competitors. But it is a little the people who don't feel that way it's because it, they're probably used to something else the headroom's in a little different spots um, it's not right in the center okay but what happens is as, as you use the tent a bit you just get used to like naturally shifting to where the headroom is and the payoff of that it's like a really quick little shift for maybe one person who's the headroom's a little lower the payoff is you get more total headroom and the two people can be sitting offset so you're not shoulder to shoulder right next to each other you're okay. actually offset All right. so it's 
when you're when you're using the headset. So when I get mad at somebody, I got somewhere to go inside of the tent, away from them, is what you're telling me. You can get like a foot away from. Yeah. Them. See. Okay. That's nice. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I got one more question about the interior of the tent. Um, so I'm sort of a gear hoarder. <laughs> when it comes to the inside of my tent, I tend to bring a lot of the just my ditty bag in here and I just sort of dump it out, but then I like to be able to put it in pockets. I'm kind of wondering why you don't have pockets in here, actually. I was really surprised you don't. So can you please explain yourself to me? Because uh, I want pockets. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I dropped the ball there. I, um, I designed some pockets originally for this tent and they sucked. Um, and so at, at the last minute, I was like, we can't produce those. They okay. And I was like, all oh, the super light nerds, they want to save two grams anyway. <laughs> So I'm not a super light nerd. I love it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Turns out I was wrong, though, and a lot of people do want pockets. I mean, we love user feedback, and people want pockets, so then our next batch will have pockets. How, well, how many pockets are you putting in it? Uh, one on each side. One on each side. Okay. All right, good. So I'll have a place to uh, keep my fluffy stuffed animals. Teddy bear, yeah. My teddy bear. Awesome. That's great. Okay, last question I've got for you. Um, this is still nylon, right, this floor? Yeah. Uh, what denier is this? I, I, wait, don't let me guess. If I had to guess, I would say this is a fifteen. Right on. Yeah. It's really? 15. Wow. Yeah. I, I did not know that. Nice that that's that's that shows you what my life is like, Dan. How many tents I review? Okay. That's, You're an expert. Yeah. 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 Okay. So why did you do a sill nylon floor and not a Dyneema floor? Yeah. I I love Dyneema. It's awesome stuff. People are stoked about it. I'm stoked about it. But it's also important to use it in a way that really plays to its strengths. And what it what it's awesome at is tear strength. Like for a tent fly, it's incredibly strong. What it's not as awesome at is abrasion because the dyneme is actually inside the middle of it. The outside's just mylar plastic. And it, it holds up fine as a floor. I'm not against it. But it doesn't stand out for the weight in a floor application. And the problem is to actually make it durable, you have to use the thicker versions and it just makes the whole tent pack actually quite a bit bigger. So the, with the sill nylon floor, it is at least as durable. I think it's more durable. And the whole tent packs to about 60% of the size as what it would if we had a, a thicker DCF. So Dan, thank you for uh, taking the time to be on for a while and talk to me about this tent. And uh, man, hopefully uh, we'll get this thing rolling out in, by 2023, 20, February, so people can get in their hands. And I'm... Uh, Hoping people are jealous that I've got one and they don't. So, yeah, thanks for picking one up. Yeah, you got it. Appreciate you it up. All right, man. Talk soon. Thanks. Bye. All right. So, if you want to get one of these tents and you don't want to wait until February 2023, I got you because uh, we secured one of these tents for you. Dan was nice enough to take one of the ones he just happened to have to give it away to you. And here's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna comment below, I want that tent. Then you need to be a subscriber of the channel and then you need to follow Durston Gear on Instagram and me on Instagram. And if you could do all of that, you'll be enlisted in the giveaway and we will randomly pick a winner next week to give that tent away and it will be sent directly from Durston Gear. Okay, so next time it is, we're gonna go use this tent somewhere. What do you think? Should Let's we do, do it. Not me and you together, but I'm, I'm, you're gonna go, well, I'm gonna go use the tent. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Oh, wait, shoot, I forgot the tent.